Hi everyone, this is Jackie Dillon. I'll be your moderator today. The session that you're attending is NC1 map. When you need to resuscitate, you might as well innovate. We have David Gordano, who is the database administrator and is a graduate of Appalachian State. Brett Spivey serves as application developer and a graduate of UNCW in Charlotte. Both are instrumental in the development and maintenance of NC1 map and are also involved with other GIS related initiatives. Make sure that you, your login name is correct on your Zoom account so you can receive continuing education points. And also check back on the NCOG website for the recorded version of this session. If you have any questions, we're gonna hold them to the end of the session and you can put them in the chat bar. Thank you. Hello everybody, well, good morning. Uh, this is David. Uh, Brett is alongside uh, in his home in Raleigh, and uh, he'll be along in a little bit to uh, give us a demonstration, a few slides in, but just wanted to get started um, with the title of when you need to resuscitate, you might as well innovate. It's a bit of a quirky thing, uh, but it's one that's fitting, and you'll figure it out um, as we move along here later on in this, uh, a couple extra slides down the list. So our goal today um, is to discuss why and how we implemented the new version of NC1 map. And really at a high level, the goal was to make data as discoverable as possible in as many formats as possible, and to have that data reliable, current, and well-documented. Uh, Pre-2010 told them we want their archaic web apps back. Uh, if you've been around as long as Brett and I have, if you're as long in the tooth as we are, you've probably seen or used uh, any number of these. Um, we've come a long way since then. Uh, the functionality of these may have been fine, uh, but there is, there was the expectation to keep up with the modern design, uh, and uh, which also lends to the credibility of the application or the applications and the product and the project. This is a screenshot of the uh, immediate predecessor to NC1 that you guys probably have seen that and used it uh, in the past. So what do coffee, fire planes, and car struts have in common? Well, in some way, they all led to the demise of the old version of NC1 map. I'll explain here in a second. So tools supporting the legacy application, mainly technologies called Java, Tomcat, and Apache struts, you get it now, became a bear to maintain. Our security team was getting on us, and rightly so, to install patch after patch when vulnerabilities were found in the application. So the app served us well, but there was a lack of knowledge on our part and experience uh, led to concerns surrounding the security and, ab and ability to correct the functionality as issues arose. In a word, it became more and more difficult to resuscitate. So we had to come up with a new way, um, something new, and uh, because of the way technology changes rapidly over time, we needed to try to be innovative in the way that we did that. So part of that innovation was embracing cloud-based solutions, which have gained popularity um, and are only becoming more so, uh, more prevalent in the GIS space. So Esri leverages uh, this, this technology to deliver their web-based GIS. And in particular, ArcGIS Online has been embraced across uh, governments, all levels of government, uh, with widespread adoption and growing proficiency. So the whole purpose of our undertaking this project was to allow people to find their golden nugget, if you will, that data or information uh, that they find that they need to get their work done. Developing standard documentation practices also provides a consistent and reliable search and discovery experience for customers. Establishing and adopting those stand, standardized best practices helps both data providers and data consumers in a number of ways. And I'll just highlight a couple of things for each of those. So for consumers, it allows for consistent, accurate, and comprehensive search results. And less time is spent tracking down the data and more time is spent using the data, which is what everybody wants, of course. For the data providers, 
It allows more on a return on investment for data development by getting more people to leverage those investments. It helps get your data house in order and organize it. And for state government agencies, adopting these practices and standards benefits the discovery of data, not just through NC1 map, but for anyone who may be searching for data in ArcGIS Online. So in our evaluation, we looked at a couple of different technologies. Uh, CCAN was one of them, Socrata was another, and Open Data Store, Open Data Soft as well. Uh, so we evaluated all these, they all have their pluses and minuses. But it's important to note that we weren't trying to uh, provide open data functionality for the whole capital E enterprise. We were narrowly just kind of focused on geospatial data. So let the cat out of the bag, obviously. Um, ArcGIS Hub was the chosen one, it was the winner, I suppose. Um, and we chose that for a number of reasons. And I'll just highlight some of those real quick. Uh, first of all, the data is free. Uh, sorry, the application is free if you have an ArcGIS Online organizational account. Uh, the data is fed into it from ArcGIS Online, which is widely adopted across governments of all levels, which is key because it creates a built in kind of a built-in expertise for uh, the data providers that provide geospatial information to NC1 map. It's a managed cloud application. So Esri does all the heavy lifting with maintenance and tool development, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we found it to be easy and intuitive. Uh, the website creation is, is really easy. It's a series of dragging and dropping objects to build the application and the web pages. Uh, there's also some custom ability there if you're so inclined to do that. Uh, also, the data integration. It's easy to incorporate incorporate data from other state agencies, which is a quick spin up uh, of data content and get that data out as quickly as possible. And we found it uh, quick and easy uh, to do the updates and add content to the website. Just use the tools in the browser that it provided, pretty much. And also, a big reason was there was no more. Uh, there were no more concerns for data synchronization. So data is not copied and passed around, uh, but it stays with the, with the provider or with the custodian and simply shared within ArcGIS Online. And just a quick workflow here is really simple workflow of how we get our data, the NC1 map data to you guys. So it starts out with an ArcGIS Online item uh, in obviously ArcGIS Online. And that could be a web service, a file geo database, a shape file, a PDF file, a Word document. It really doesn't matter. Uh, that item is shared with an RGS Online group. Now the group is just a collection of items which designated users have access to. And again, that could be anything, web services, web apps, uh, geo databases, Microsoft Office documents, so on and so forth. So in the group settings of that group, uh, there's a setting that allows the uh, contents of the group to be shared with open data sites in ArcGIS Hub. It's a really small checkbox there at the bottom of the settings page. You may miss it if you're not looking out for it. So you check that, you click OK, and the data that is in that group is then discoverable through uh, the, all the hub sites that you have uh, within your organization. Um, this workflow is really simple. Um, it can be easily replicated by you and your organization to share the data that you want to. And with that, it's demo time for Brett. So Brett, you can have it. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> Morning, everybody. And so uh, just to pick up on a couple points of what David mentioned, um, this is built upon ArcGIS Online and Esri's ArcGIS Data Hub. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that we're really not um, creating anything from scratch. So as David mentioned, it's really a matter of dragging and dropping and configuring various widgets to build the site. Uh, and let's just take a quick tour of that now. So uh, one thing for us that we really took into account, especially for NC1 map, and should probably, if you're public facing, um, also consider when you're planning to build one of these, 
is that um, who your client base is. And for us, that could range from anybody from a very proficient GIS professional to someone who barely knows what um, map data is and how to use it. So we really had to accommodate a broad spectrum of people. And when doing that, we tried to make uh, the site intuitive as possible and also lay it out in a way such that uh, the most common data could be accessed uh, the quickest and the easiest as possible. And so each page that we have on our website, um, based on feedback we've gotten and just kind of our own uh, intuition, we've laid out top to bottom that uh, as you scroll down the page, it gets from most commonly used or most desired information to least. And, that, and that's really key in terms of the planning of this. Um, so let's take a quick walk through the home page here. Uh, I won't bore you with it too much, but you can see that e each one of these is a series of rows. Excuse me. And again, as we go from top to bottom, we're highlighting uh, information, apps, and data that we get most requests for. Um, you can search for it in a variety of ways. We also highlight some of the ongoing statewide data initiatives, things that you know, if you certainly don't hear about it in the news, you are hearing about it in the GIS community, things like ortho imagery, uh, next gen 911, broadband and such. We also are developing a, a resource center. There's uh, admittedly just a few items in there now, but our idea is to help build this out to um, provide supporting materials, not just on how to use um, NC1 map, but also how if you are wanting to leverage the resources within it or perhaps develop um, similar type site to kind of give you a springboard to, to get on that. And then um, towards the bottom, as always, we're always soliciting feedback from people that visit the site. And we do have a Twitter feed as well. So I'd invite you to take a look at that. Um, just to walk through this a little bit. So, you know, most people are going to come here to get data, obviously, and you can do that with a search. And you're presented with a list of uh, results. And I'm going to use parcels here just because this is a pre-canned demo. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and most of the, the features that I'm going to show here, again, this is not something that we did that was super special. Um, this was provided by core functionality that's provided by the Data Hub. Um, but it really did increase the functionality and capabilities um, compared to the previous version of OneMap that you saw. So just to start off, we, you know, at the very top here, we have an interactive map view, very simple interactive map view. And of course, the poly polygons for parcels is about five and a half million. There's no way you could draw that, but um, just like you would with an Esri uh, web map, you know, you can zoom in and interact with it a little bit. And, and you know, as you, this is based off of a feature service. So as you mouse over, you're able to see some items. Um, you can click on a feature and get item information just like you would in a web map. Um, you can come down and see some basic information about the service along with the attributes that are available for the item. We can pop over here to the data tab and see the actual attributes and records that are contained for this data. And not only that, but you can go through and do a, ser a single filter or a series of filters to really get that data narrowed down. And just one thing to note that as you do that, the results or the items shown in the interactive web map up here at the top are also filtered. So you really kind of get a very uh, easy, a little bit simplified, but very easy way to have a web map-like experience um, right within the hub. And then, of course, if you are interested in doing these types of things, um, there's a query builder in here. So you can go in and interactively check or uncheck attributes that are part of this resource. You can uh, apply a spatial filter if you would like. You can um, designate what type of output you would like. And if you didn't happen to notice, as you are doing this, this URL is, is dynamically changing on the right. So once you have your options set over here, this is just a matter of copying and pasting into a custom application you may be developing or um, just to have on hand to throw into a browser window to get a quick answer from a data set. And then uh, perhaps the, 
two other most important things are you can download this data. So if you uh, applied any type of filter to that, you can get just the, the filtered records that you've chosen back on the data tab. And of course, you can also download uh, the full data set. And then if you're into web services, which we hope you are, uh, you can click on the API button here and uh, get direct URLs to the resource in the protocol of your choice. And this is dictated by the data provider. So as David said, we're not shipping data around like we used to do five or 10 years ago. Um, this is pointing back to RGS on the resources provided by uh, the, the partner. So if they have not uh, implemented WMS or support for WFS, then you're not going to see that here. So anything that they're willing to support will automatically be provided in these two folders. And that's about it. So it's, it's pretty simple. And, um, you know, we hope you, you guys find it useful. If, if you don't, or you have a construction, constructive uh, criticism or suggestion, please let us know. Um, we, we work hard to build this so that it can get the most utility for the most people. And again, um, just look forward to your feedback. Back to you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the, the session. If anybody has any questions, um, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. We got one more one more slide here, Jack. Oh, we'll be, we'll I'm be sorry. Through. Thought you were early. Okay. I was like, wow. Got to talk that quick. <laughs> just, I just want to wrap things up. Okay. So, so in closing, it may seem uh, grossly, if you will, impossible, but it's not difficult to produce something that that we've done here. Uh, we didn't invent the wheel. Um, however, there are some important keys to um, how your how our implementation could be replicated by other organizations to improve data discovery and dissemination. Uh, the first one is planning. So know what you want to share, how you want to share it, um, organize your ArcGIS online groups and categories, which is uh, we didn't touch on, but that's another feature in uh, AGOL. And create, uh, just create a simple site map for your website design also. Uh, number two, don't try to boil the ocean. Don't take too much on at once. Uh, be agile in your development, get feedback as you go and build things accordingly. Number three, it's been said that imitation is the sin sincerest form of flattery. Um, and Brett and I have made ample use of this. So don't be ashamed to uh, borrow ideas from other ArcGIS hub sites to get inspired to develop your own. And lastly, uh, document your data. Customers won't know what they found if you don't tell them what it is. So just keep that in mind as well. And that was the last slide. I'll just note, uh, you can contact either one of us. Our email addresses are there on the left. And also there's a feedback page uh, on the NC1 map site. The link is there. Uh, but if you just go to nc1map.gov and click on contact us at the top, you'll get there. And please follow us on Twitter for um, news announcements, stuff like that, uh, just to keep up to date with, um, uh, with the application and data that becomes available on it. Now that is the last slide. And we'll take some questions now. <laughs> you still made it within that 10 minute mark. <laughs> yeah, we did. So currently we just have a lot of kudos for the presentation. Uh, we have one comment from Connie that says, like to take this opportunity to thank you for your good work. And seeing one map has provided a lot of valuable data to us in our daily work. The website is easy to access and downloading is easy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie, just as, as those comments are coming in, I'm seeing them flash up too. I, I popped okay. in just for a couple seconds on the um, LGC panel discussion yesterday. And for those that weren't there, uh, there was a question regarding data that you have needed in the past, um, either at a regional or statewide level that uh, was not readily available. So if, if you've come across any data items like that, or uh, just have an idea for one that you think would be applicable for your business operations, that would be something that we would greatly welcome so that we could um, pass that on and try and see if we could make some inroads on that front. Um, I do have one question from Amy Axon. 
she says, is there a way to search for data available from local governments, county, and city organizations? Well, right now, Amy, thanks for the question. Right now, um, the only data that's sourced from local governments is the, the cadastral data. That's the first one that comes to mind. So uh, counties, uh, county GIS shops actually upload their parcel data to a what's, what we're calling a transformer which normalizes the attributes statewide and uh, makes the, that normalized data set available from NC1 map. Um, but right now, and it's something we can look at in the future, there's not a, an ArcGIS Online hub link to uh, county or local governments within one map. I have another question. Thank, from you. Thank you for that Tom, suggestion though. Sorry. Tom Poe, are layers available to download or access with AGOL in use in, to use in our other G, our GIS maps? Sorry. Yes. Uh, yes, you can, you can download. Um, you, actually, you don't have to use um, NC1 map or ArcGIS hub at all. You can uh, search through ArcGIS online if you want to use that platform uh, instead to search for data that is in NC1 map. And um, although the interface will be a little bit different, uh, you can you can get to web services and download the data that way if you desire. And that kind of goes back to a key point that David made during the presentation about um, re developing best practices and standards in terms of tagging and um, information to put in the item description. So by having our partners do that and adopt those practices, then when you do do a search in RGS online for a particular keyword or whatever, you know, you're more assured or can be assured that the results that are coming back either from the data hub, one map data hub or ArcGIS online, you're, you're getting the full results that you're not missing a potentially critical um, data item that you could use. We got five more minutes, keep them coming. <laughs> Uh, there's a comment here that says uh, people who were hit by hurricanes found the statewide parcels to be really helpful to continue to help customers. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. I mean, that's that's the most popular um, that's the most popular data set in NC1 map uh, by far, and it's really come a long way. And a lot of people are finding it useful. So, absolutely. We still have seven minutes. <laughs> Anybody want to play a game? <laughs> That's right. Anybody got quiplash still? <laughs> uh. I just want to add one more thing about um, about Twitter. Um, if you would please please follow follow us on there. We don't we don't really post anything on there unless we really need to. So you're not going to get inundated with um, with a bunch of nonsense on your on your Twitter feed. Um, we really want to start using that that platform a little a little more or a lot more to uh, to broadcast what's new and what's changed with um, with NC One Map um, as opposed to you know the listservs and email emails old passe. Um, so we'd really like to use use Twitter and um, uh, things like that to get the word out about changes in MC1 map. And to that point, there is an announcements page that we created not too long ago uh, on mc1map.gov, um, and it references a lot of the same stuff that we would be tweeting out. So check that page you. and or follow Twitter would be terrific. I got a few more that have come in. Um, one question, and this might be more for our, um, do we have a survey, Jeremy? I don't know if you have a survey to send out. And also, okay. Um, one question was, or could you talk about what photogrammic, photogrammatic hooks or access points exist to the, to the new hub site or exit to the new hub site for application developers? I just really messed that one up. That makes sense. I'm not sure mm -hmm. I understood understood all of that to be honest. <laughs> Talk about what photogrammatic hooks or access points exit to the new hub site for application developers. 
Yeah, so if, if you go in and search um, under image services or ortho imagery or any of those types of keywords, then you're going to get to be taken to an item details page, similar to what you saw for parcels. And much of that same interface will be the same. So you'll have the ability to um, grab the URL, service URL, and the protocol of your choice. And can also jump over to that uh, query builder and do some interaction there. Although, to be honest with you, um, the imagery that comes from the ortho imagery program is already pre processed to the point to where that really is not going to give you a whole lot. Um, you know, the main thing you probably want to do is just go to that items details page and grab the service URL. Next one is just curious about metadata is easy way to find metadata. Is there an easy way to find metadata for the data set? Yeah, yeah. so no. well, go ahead, Dave. You sure? I don't want to go on your toes. So with that, on every item page that Brett showed with uh, the parcels, for instance, there's a, uh, a hyperlink on the right that says view metadata or, or something like that. And um, you'll get the you'll get the full uh, in the case of the parcels, you get the full compliant um, metadata record for that for that data set. We do in the best practices require some resemblance of metadata. We, we know it's kind of arduous for people and kind of falls by the wayside um, when you're creating your data. But we do need some sort of uh, record of what the data is and um, who people can contact if there's a question about it. Two more. What other states formatting do you like? <laughs> Well, it's not um, so much we, a state. It's more like a district. <laughs> we, made, we made ample use of, uh, yeah, the, the nation's capital. They have a, a really, uh, what we found, a really good um, ArcGIS hub site. And we, um, we, we took a lot of uh, cues from that. We'll put, it like, we'll put it like that. Okay. And then last one, Tom Coe says, are all layers in NC1 map in the same coordinate system, state plane system, et cetera? Uh, the data stays in the native projection that it was given to us. So 99.9% .9 of it is meters or feet, uh, state plane meters or state plane feet. Yeah, and that, that's, that's if you download it. So one advantage of using the service is you can specify um, in any number of protocols, you can specify the desired coordinate system. So, um, the, you know, the data will transform uh, per request. So if you have something that is non-native, you know, if it's in state plane feet, for instance, and you need it in something else, if you download it, it's going to come in state plane feet. But when you make that, that service call, you can specify your desired projection. Great. <laughs> and what's your uptime now compared to previously? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a question for Ezra. I don't Ezra. know if that's tongue in cheek or an honest question. <laughs> Is that a left handed compliment? I don't know. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cloud based. So whatever, whatever Ezra's uptime is, is what MC1 map is. Um, you know, compared to previously, you know, as that, I don't have a specific number or percentage, but as, as the legacy app got kind of long in the tooth, um, it became, as we said before, more and more difficult to keep it up and running. So, it, you know, people were frustrated with it just as much as we were trying to get that thing um, to run constantly and, and the way people expected it to be. Um, so that's why Hub was all the more welcome of a change for us. Um, Catherine said she was getting at, uh, can you comment on ease of use? For you as an administrator. <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's it's a hundred. It's 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 night and day. Um, and, and Brett can speak to this as well. It's it's totally it's a totally different platform. Um, and you know, all you're doing is 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 using and leveraging the tools that are presented to you. You know, in the in the browser, and that's that's it. There's no there's no patching. There's nothing to do with any servers or uh, Tomcat or IIS or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, to do, um, not being well versed in job and in the Java platform, I mean, even to do simple things like add an announcement box or something. I mean, it, it was a, a process of making three backups just in case we didn't screw something up in a JSP page. And then, you know, whereas now we just log in to the hub site and we make the change, you're able to preview it before it goes live. And I mean, it's just, it's just so, 
It's so much better. Well, thank you, Brett and David, for the session. I think we got a good, good amount of questions there at the end. Um, and y'all have a great last session of the day. And stick around <laughs> for prizes. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the Thank polling, you. guys. Thank you.